Today, Turkey's president told the world that Saudi Arabia committed premeditated murder in Turkey when they sent an assassination team to Istanbul to murder Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi. The information and the evidence that we have so far collected indicate that Jamal Khashoggi was slain in a vicious, violent murder. And there are indeed strong signs that the incident was not a, thing, a, a momentary issue or a momentary result of something that erupted on site, but rather the result of a planned operation. And now there is official acknowledgement that there was a murder. Where is the body? Why do we still not have the body? We have never heard a speech like that by a head of state ever. President Erdogan asked Saudi Arabia to extradite the 18 people that they have detained so that they can be tried for murder in Turkey where the crime was committed. Today in Saudi Arabia, Jamal Khashoggi's son was summoned to publicly shake the hand of the man who surely ordered the murder of his father, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. The Crown Prince has been preventing Jamal Khashoggi's son from leaving Saudi Arabia, and we can be sure that the Crown Prince did not allow him to leave today and did not tell him where his father's body is. Today in Washington, Secretary of State Pompeo revoked the visas of the Saudis who are suspected of murdering uh, Jamal Khashoggi, meaning only that they cannot travel to the United States. And the President of the United States still cannot bring <clears throat> any moral outrage or even any slight moral quibbles or questioning to the case. Instead, the president chose today to try to demonstrate his expertise in murder conspiracies by saying that the Saudis had a very bad concept for their murder conspiracy, and he presumably would have had a better one if it was his murder conspiracy. And he tried to demonstrate his expertise in cover-ups saying that the Saudi cover-up was the worst cover-up in the history of cover-ups. Presumably Donald Trump would have created a better cover-up for an assassination in Turkey. Donald Trump did not say how the Saudi cover-up compares to his and Michael Cohen's failed cover-up of his adventures with Stormy Daniels, which has now left Michael Cohen as a convicted federal felon and Donald Trump as an unindicted co-conspirator. They had a very bad original concept. It was carried out poorly, and the cover-up was one of the worst in the history of cover-ups. And they had the worst cover-up ever. The cover-up, if you want to call it that, was certainly no good. The cover-up was horrible. The execution was horrible. But they should have never been at an execution or a cover-up, because it should have never happened. Joining our discussion now, Ambassador Wendy Sherman, former Undersecretary of State and MSNBC Global Affairs contributor and the author of the new book, Not for the Faint of Heart, Lessons in Courage, Power and Persistence. And uh, Ambassador Sherman, the president begins by saying his words. They had a very bad original concept. Very bad original concept is his description of an international murder conspiracy. An international murder conspiracy where the body was dismembered and no one knows where it is. It was the most of all the many bizarre things he said to talk about this as a concept where the cover-up didn't go very well when in fact it is a horrific crime against humanity quite actually mm -hmm. and president Erdogan today uh, said to the Saudis uh, through his speech uh, tell us who the local conspirator is because the, in the Saudi story they say that uh, there, there was a local uh, person in Turkey who's part of this who may be currently in possession of the body or know where the body or body parts are. Indeed, there's an awful lot going on here. And underneath all of this, Lawrence, are people who are authoritarian leaders. Um, President Erdogan of Turkey is an authoritarian leader. Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince, is an authoritarian leader. Uh, the president of the United States today said he's a nationalist which is actually a term used as a bedrock of fascism, though I don't think the president is a fascist. I do think, in his own words, he's a nationalist. You just mm -hmm. discussed in our country that's white nationalism, but it also speaks to authoritarianism. And 
this is a very disturbing time for all of us. Let's listen to what the president said today when he was asked about uh, holding uh, the crown prince accountable. Well, we'll have to do something, but I, I will say this. Uh, I spoke with the king. I spoke with the crown prince yesterday, and he strongly said that he had nothing to do with this. This was at a lower level. Here we go again. This is Vladimir Putin told me strongly that he had nothing to do Absolutely. with this election interference. Indeed. I wonder what he did. I guess he never saw his children when they were growing up. But when they say to their parents, I really didn't take yeah, the no, money out of that. Never in that conversation. Right, never in that he never conversation. Did any so I don't think he all. knows the predicate no. for this. No. The issue here is we don't have to destroy our relationship with Saudi Arabia. We've all done business with Saudi Arabia. We've all been impressed with some ways in which they've helped us in intelligence and strategic thinking about the Middle East. But this is a crime of untold proportion to take a resident U.S. citizen and murder them in the Saudi consulate, and there have to be consequences. What would you be recommending to a president today? I would be recommending to the president to look at how we sanction Saudi Arabia for these actions. Uh, if I actually had the goods on the crown prince, I would have to speak out publicly about that in real terms. Uh, we certainly should look at our arms sales. You know, this $110 billion of arms sales is just not real. There are about maybe $25 billion in sales that are on the books, and the rest of it is what we call a memorandum of intent. We hope to. And in fact, the jobs the president talks about aren't real either. Uh, when Lockheed Martin got a contract for Black Hawk helicopters, they're going to be assembled in Saudi Arabia to provide jobs for Saudi Arabians, not for Americans. So the president isn't telling us the truth here, something new and different. Uh, but more importantly, uh, we are not looking at our values. Yes, we have interests and values, and they don't always align. But if you don't go with your values, you never get to them. Uh, one quick point about uh, <clears throat> the, the United States president saying we're going to pull out of our arms agreement with Russia. It's an insane decision. We've now given up all of our leverage with Russia. You stay in arms control agreements, and you have them because you are going to have problems, and you use them to create leverage. We have now given a blank check to Russia to proceed forward. The president said today, we're going to have an arms race. We're going to see, uh, to use a phrase, whose hands are bigger here. Uh, and uh, we've also told China it's fine for them to go ahead. It was a really, really insane decision that is against our own national security interest. Uh, have you ever used the phrase insane decision for any previous <laughs> president? Uh, rarely. Yeah. Former Ambassador Wendy Sherman, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.